The following video may contain sensitive topics. The views and opinions of the presenter to these are plainly his own. Furthermore, any and all views and opinions of the presenter do not in any way reflect the views, opinions, statements, and advocacies of his personal contacts, his family, his affiliations, and his profession. While the presenter makes a commitment that all content is original, he is obliged to cite references or acknowledge resources mentioned or used in the production of this video. This disclaimer is also written in the description below. I remember a quote from one of the Dark Knight films. You either die a hero or live long enough to see yourself become the villain. With that in mind, many think the Pope reflects the latter case. First of all, it's almost 4 in the morning when I recorded this. So, pardon on my soft voice. Besides, I'm not going to add some some things here. So go to intro by then but other than that, nothing. Hi there Ian here. It all started with the Spanish phrase convivencia civil. And I say that in European Spanish because I can. I never knew this was going to be a shit show. Now, if I would be brutally honest about the Pope's latest statement, basically this is what I'm going to talk about. I can sum up my initial reaction in three words, four if you add the expletive. I felt fucking betrayed. In fact, we all are. You see, I've been rambling about the Pachamama incident for the last bloody year and how it basically screwed friendships and acquaintances up. And exactly a year after, give or take a few weeks, here he goes again. Ah oh, shit, here we go again. Now, some context. Pope Francis made another off-the-cuff remark about the prospect of recognizing same-sex unions in a certain documentary. It's in Spanish because the Pope is an Argentinian after all, and the remark has since been a point of contestation between Catholics on social media, and not even, and not just Catholics, but also everyone else. Now, this is nothing new. In fact, I am supposed to be jaded about this because it's the style of the old man. And we have the same bloody problem with the people in authority here in these islands. So I somehow felt jaded something like that actually came out. But the thing is this. The current residents of both Malacanang and the White House and in extension the government house in Bangkok would only have a particular clout and a particular set of critics. The Pope, who is also head of state of the Vatican, happens to be the leader of the largest religious movement the world has ever seen. And his critics come from across the world. And to be brutally frank, I either see this as a PR disaster or as a full-blown ecclesiastical crisis, or worse, both. Now here's the thing about criticisms and dissents in the church. They're tolerated, but they seem not to not be tolerating, or they seem not to be tolerated depending on who's sitting on the Cathedra of St. Peter, or the throne of St. Peter. And quite honestly, these seven or so years, the current Pope sits on that said cathedra or throne has been a time of confusion and isolation. No wonder folks like Taylor Marshall, Michael Voris, Archbishop Carlo Maria Vigano, Bishop Athanasius Schneider, and like-minded punters exist. 
But when I saw a statement from Scott Hahn dissenting on the controversial PayPal statement recently um, it recently went a buzz I have to admit I lost my shit you see this has been the last straw for some this wasn't the first upset after all there's the communion disaster in the Pope's Philippine visit in 2015 the breed like rabbits comment Laudato si, Amores Laetitia, the betrayal made to the persecuted Christians in China, the Amazon Synod, and now this. Now, to give the benefit of the doubt to those who say to me, Ian, you're such a naysayer and a critic. The Pope has been misquoted again by mainstream media, as you might know. Let me tell you here and now. I also have party discussions with my partner who has been schooled by the Jesuits. She and I struggle to make middle ground with this blunder and others and we make sure that we wouldn't make these decisions dictate our relationship and that's the end of it. Now real talk. Point taken on the media spin. That's a no-brainer. Besides, I've been studying about the media and its behavior um, vis-a-vis uh, religious teachings so it's it's very familiar but the fact that the Pope said this in the very first place either in, in his current office or in his previous one as Archbishop of Buenos Aires is disturbing enough I wouldn't say it here and now I would say it here and now right? If this continues without intervention, I can only speculate that the Romans will rise up, take to the streets, and force their own bishop to resign from the church's top job. It is not a question of how or why, but when. And unless the Pope does something in this, in his own shameful accord, we would only see this getting worse. So. Let's ask ourselves, should this statement be a cause of concern? The long and short answer to that is yes. And because of the many precedences of his loose mouth and hands, rightfully so. But should we go batshit crazy, drop the Pope in our prayers, and go full set of vacantist? No, absolutely not. I don't think so. And on the other side of things, should we take the statement in its face value and just live with it and allow sexual debaucheries to exist? I don't know how to answer that. But I guess we should instead avoid rearing the next generation to become degenerates lack lacking a moral compass because their parents saw morality as a thing of the past, throwing what is good along with what's bad about all that, like throwing the baby out with the bathwater or to take into the context of abortion, throwing the baby out with a placenta. I remember a quote from one of the Dark Knight films. You either die a hero or live long enough to see yourself become the villain. With that in mind, many think the Pope reflects the latter case, but honestly, it cuts both ways. We would either be ridiculed and considered socially dead to the world yet hopefully find favor with God or live the rest of our lives ruminating in these dark times and worry about our eternal salvation. For my part, I can say these indeed are dark times. And for all it's worth, the Pope's marching orders upon his election seven years ago rings loudest now. Pray for me, he said. But I think we shouldn't just pray in one corner and pray for him to God. We should also speak out if we think this is more than we could ever bear. So before I end this video, I would like to share to you two Bible passages. First of them is when Simon Peter asked Christ in the Gospels if he only was to has to forgive seven times. We all know 
the Lord's answer on that. Then we go to one of St. Paul's epistles where he wrote about correcting Peter in his face for his unbecoming of an apostle of Christ and unbecoming of the rock on, on which Christ built his church upon. But what happened after that is both unwritten and nothing short of a miracle. We all know both Peter and Paul were martyred in Rome in the same year, maybe days or even hours apart from each other. We can only speculate if they met each other for one last time to settle their differences aside and renew their dedication of the lives about to be taken away from them by the Roman pa pagans. And as we all know, the rest was history. This time, in this our time, we only hope that we can forgive Peter 70 times 7 and not just be like Paul in correcting him in his face. The Pope is just a man, yes, but the Church expects him to be a man of God because God wants to preserve and defend him from the sifting and maleficent schemes of the devil and in the end confirm the flock entrusted to him. So let me rephrase it. The Pope may just be a man but the Church expects him to be God's first and foremost servant upon earth. And with all that said, this is Ian reminding you that at all times, now more than ever, be the salt of the earth and the light of the world. Until then, look alive, stay alive, and see you next time. Ian out.